of the NTA and also Property Connect, a nationwide maxim. Our priority is to bridge poverty gaps and sustain quality welfare of our clients. narrative on the need for communities to take the lead in the fight against HIV and AIDS. This is premised on the understanding that programs and initiatives perform better when driven by the most impacted communities. Let's How is this playing out in Nigeria? This is where we beam our spotlight on this week's episode of Head Thanks for joining cement, us on the program. I am Sabi Abdella. If you just Some joining us, this is Health ago. Options, the, the program that not only tracks government policies on health, skills but helps you with the information you need to make informed choices about your health. Our focus is on entrenching community-driven HIV and AIDS response, However, and I have with me in the studio to give us insights into how Nigeria is prioritizing this in the national response, the director general of the National used. Agency for this the Control of AIDS, plaster, Dr. Gambo Ali. It's good to have you on plaster, that option, Dr. Ali. Uh, thank you, Ravi. It's a pleasure to be here. A lot of emphasis has shifted to the, uh, the community on the need for the response on HIV and AIDS be driven by the community. Can we start on that uh, note? What exactly are we talking about in reference and as Thank a result, you. It is likely yes, we are putting emphasis um, on communities uh, because people live areas. and interact within Plus communities. And as HIV response um, is cruising towards um, controlling the virus and making sure that uh, we end it <coughs> by the year 2030, um, things that are coming out are clearly showing that coming out are clearly materials. showing uh, that there are laggards out there in the, the community generally. that and either don't have access to our services because uh, they are out of reach or they don't have access because of what has been hampering access for the last 40 years to HIV services that we've been fighting HIV and that is stigma and discrimination. You cannot end AIDS without identifying people living with the virus and making sure they don't give the virus to other people. Also, that virus um, does not constitute health freaks. The only way um, we can get access to those people that we found difficult to access is to use community and community leadership. And that is why um, this World AIDS Day, we emphasize the use of community and community leadership to have um, access to community members uh, that we have found very difficult to have access and that have been harboring HIV and have been giving HIV to others. One, either they don't know they have HIV because they have never had HIV the, testing. Two, they may know they have the HIV, but they are afraid to come forward and access treatment services. Three, they may have known they have the HIV. They have started accessing treatment services, but they drop out of the treatment and because of stigma and discrimination. These are issues that we want sure community leadership um, to help us address. Why? Because so that the, person will go to a the people living with it, HIV are within so us. And they con the continue to give the members of the community virus as long as like they find it difficult to come forward you and know they have HIV. And um, they will continue to give members of community the virus as long as they have the virus and they find it difficult of their right reluctant to, to come forward and uh, um, access is our treatment services. It is going to be a win-win situation. Um, the community the leadership leading to ensure that, that members of the community are not stigmatized against those who have that HIV that and also they are not discriminated against and they are assisted to access services. To and if we do that, the then people living with HIV AIDS will get the support and the comfort they needed. One, to work with us 
um, to help who we do the them achieve that um, level we have al always been preaching After that uh, make sure that the virus in you disappears when we reach you um, when the virus disappears we reach a stage we call you equals to you that means if the virus is not seen, approved, the virus cannot be transmitted. Okay, so we're talking about the past now. I, I, I remember that um, time it was when uh, uh, there was a lot of momentum, when the community was really, really involved you know, in, the, in the response. You know, in those days, all hands were on deck. We had support groups, we had men over time. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, I've it's had people now that are saying that um, the response has become you know, over-medicalized. What's your take on this? The response is not over-medicalized per se, but uh, development that are coming along the way. Um, before, the access to treatment services we have now were limited. And also, um, the capacity you know, of the, the treatment of options we have to, um, to help us take us to where we are uh, has not been discovered as we are discovering it more and more this time. Now we are getting to realize that with treatment, um, good treatment, we can actually end it. Before, we, we never uh, thought that perhaps probably this is possible. What we were thinking is getting HIV vaccine um, as uh, we deal with every virus, get a preventative vaccine that will prevent people from having HIV infection and that would be fine. But later it became obvious that the vaccine has been uh, continued to become elusive. So uh, without the vaccine um, uh, coming and uh, without option, um, that we'll will also to serve as vaccines. The only option we have to end to AIDS end and make sure that HIV that um, continue to be seen as a every chronic disease. Guided. That's Let's the same way we right. see hypertension, Until the same way we treat the diabetics. Goodbye. People okay. live with the virus, you know, without the virus killing them, without the virus making them sick, and also um, without them giving other people the virus. The only way we can do that um, is using the medicines that are now available and also accessible. Um, we have them all over the country. Let, let's look at um, the aspect of, you know, really, really preventing new infections now, which to me, it, you know, is crucial. What exactly it's on ground when it's happening, when it comes to um, getting the community to take the lead? What, what, what are those um, programs on ground or strategies on the ground now that point to that direction? Um, when you talk of um, adolescents and young persons, they are an important community um, that we have um, recently found way to engage with, especially using social media and using platforms um, that you find them. Uh, because the conventional media we use, um, the television, uh, 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 the print media, uh, you know, we realize that their, atten their attention uh, is not much there. Uh, but you can actually have access to them by a platform that they feel comfortable with, and we're doing that. Um, on the side of the mother-to-child transmission, I think this is one area um, that we have a renewed strategy going forward. Why I'm saying a renewed strategy, we've, uh, we've, we've seen and we are seeing other countries now eliminating mother-to-child transmission. They are not talking of prevention of mother-to-child transmission. They are actually eliminating, meaning no um, newborn babies are seen um, born with HIV. And I think this is something that we can do, and that is why you've seen this renewed action. Recently, the First Lady was in um, Victoria Falls, Zimbabwe, uh, before our uh, uh, African meeting, which we call the CASA, uh, no, no, on HIV, which is biannual. Uh, and this was uh, to emphasize, to collaborate with other first ladies to provide leadership, uh, you know, in Africa on um, preventing and then eliminating mother to child transmission. And on this, you will see community action beginning 2024. We've realized that over the last four years, we found more people living with HIV by leaving um, the traditional facilities where we sit and wait for people to come and access our services. 
to actually meet them at the community level at the doorsteps of um, their houses. So we're going to have um, more activities uh, beginning from 2024 this at the community the level, the engaging with the community and providing access, um, especially to pregnant women. There should, no, there should be no pregnancy or a pregnant um, uh, couple um, that will carry pregnancy from beginning to the end without having access to HIV services. Every pregnancy must be tested for HIV. And to do this, we're not only limiting our, um, uh, our services or our campaign, you know, among the general public. No, we're looking at community gatekeepers. We are looking at traditional rulers, um, religious leaders, and political leaders to lead. And you will see collaboration between NACA and National Assembly in particular, um, where uh, we will use uh, political leaders, members of National Assembly, to give us access to their community and to lead now, us in their community the in the campaign because when it comes to campaign um, we know there are professors there you know when it comes to having message and getting across to people i think national assembly can help us you know as you said amplify and this one catapult our message you know to the doorstep of their constituencies to make sure that in each constituency no pregnant woman, you know, escape HIV testing, meaning no pregnant woman um, delivers a baby with HIV. The good thing is that once we identify a pregnant HIV mother, we have 100% success rate of preventing mother to child um, transmission. So if we do that, um, give us 2024, 2025, uh, having access to community, you know, in ways and manner that we have not had before, and having the religious, political, and um, traditional rulers, you know, behind us and um, getting this message across to their constituencies, to the members of their community, including the community that we work with day and night, and these are the key affected population. Um, people are, that are getting HIV much faster and are giving HIV and much faster to others, you know, are also involved in this campaign. Um, we will have this campaign taken to community level, house door level, um, until we see that the entire country is saturated with this message. No baby should be born with HIV. And once and we have this campaign taken to the grassroots and people get it and people start demanding for HIV services, I guarantee you, Nigeria can eliminate mother to child transmission. Um, I know of a family. I, I got to know the mother in the course of my job. Um, her own body, you know, got infected. She, she was burned with the virus. And years later, she is now a full adult. And um, the other day, I got a call from her. We had a conversation, and she said, I tell her this. I and my and, mom uh, are more or less like a zero virus that they and cannot transmit the virus to anyone. People, the stage that they are. Culture. Can you culture educate Nigerians on this? What is this all about? The Inability to transmit virus means that the virus is not seen in the exactly, blood. Exactly. Once the virus is not seen in the blood, the virus cannot be transmitted. And this is a very, very important stage um, to make sure that the virus is controlled. We can only control HIV uh, within our communities and also within our nation or across our nation um, if we get people living with the virus and we make sure the virus is controlled within them. How do we control virus within individual? We control the virus within individual by making sure we make the virus to disappear from the blood. If the virus is not seen in the blood, the virus cannot be transmitted. And that is why we're emphasizing the gateway to accessing our services nationwide is through testing. You need to know your status first. Demand for these services is available across all our centers in the country. And if you want more information, you can actually call our call center at NACA, 6222. We will give you information where to access our services and how to get yourself tested. Everyone should have him or herself tested at least once in your lifetime. 
uh, depending on your level of risk, you may require testing every three or six right months. Now. It doesn't okay. take much um, like from the beginning vision, of treatment like initiation so uh, to get the virus fully suppressed. Like um, so this test, we repeat them every six, six months. Um, Nigeria, um, uh, and I, then I really uh, by the time somebody is initiated, we're hoping a, they take the medication, medication and they take the medication uh, the way they are prescribed. After six months, um, there should be significant uh, progress, you know, in achieving that viral suppression. And within one year, that viral should be suppressed. Um, let, let's uh, talk about we are post exposure prophylaxis. Now I'm asking you this question because of inclusion uh, incident of uh, weight in our society. We're talking about we're talking about the community taking the lead now. How aware? The, communities of this the key communities that are targeted for pre-exposure prophylaxis are aware and we are creating more awareness among them. Who are the key communities? We're talking about people that are at greater risk um, of acquiring HIV. Um, we know if you have people um, that have sex, men who have sex with men, and um, those who inject drugs and um, female sex workers that are HIV negative, and you follow them over a period of time, um, as long as they take that risk and there is no protection, the tendency of them coming with HIV before the year ends, uh, you know, is high. And because of that, we make these uh, services available to them. These are drugs uh, that can be used by someone who does not have HIV but is at risk of acquiring HIV so to make sure that HIV you know, does not settle in uh, to cause infection. Uh, when they are utilized, they the prevent the HIV infection, infection from happening, so even when risks are taken and even when there are no protection. So this is where um, uh, the pre-exposure prophylaxis campaign concentrate at this time and also um, discordant couple. Discordant couples are a couple where one person, either the husband is HIV positive and um, the wife is HIV negative or vice uh, the reverse where the wife is positive and the husband is negative. Um, the essence of this drug is to prevent uh, the other partner that doesn't have HIV from having HIV. Um, uh, these are the two areas at the moment uh, where we campaign and provide pre-exposure prophylaxis. Okay. Um, earlier on you made reference to the National Assembly talking about leadership now. If uh, the community needs to really take the lead, you know, in uh, the response, what sort of um, support should we be looking out for in terms of political commitment from the National Assembly and uh, other um, key players? National Assembly is poised to provide um, support in various fronts. One, um, they want to partner with us and they want to be with us in the community. They want to participate in the campaign at the community level, at the grassroots level. And at the same time, they want to see how funds can be made available, you know, to provide so testing floor. services at community level, uh, so that Traditional access to the gateway, which is the the, the uh, test that somebody books. identifies or somebody get now to know their status, whether they have the virus or they don't have, uh, you know, is accessible in um, various communities so and available, a, a even in the hard to reach area, uh, especially in villages oh, and report, remote places. These services so um, will be provided. So we went, we went in with National forget. Assembly um, to make sure that there are enough funds um, for us to get these testing services across the various communities, various constituencies, um, senatorial and federal constituencies. And then we have the leadership of the National Assembly, uh, the members and the senators helping us creating this awareness within their communities, um, emphasizing the need uh, to make sure that pregnant mother, uh, at least pregnant mother, are tested for HIV services and HIV is not allowed to be transmitted to the newborn uh, babies within our communities. Okay, on a final note, uh, Dr. Aliyu, let's look at the 2030 target of elimination. Um, how are we faring in comparison with other countries?
The rate limiting step of um, arriving at 95, 95, 95 target is identifying what people living with the I virus within um, communities and, and overall in and the country. Take pictures to um, that they come from there are countries culture, now that have achieved 95, country, 95, 95, 95. However, if you look at their population so and you compare with uh, the population of Nigeria, you find out those countries um, uh, do not have African one over ten of Nigeria's population. However, at the same time, you see, Nigeria has made remarkable progress. It made remarkable progress in the last four years. We remember around 2018, 2019, when we did the survey, the last survey we did on HIV across the country. And then after the survey, we discovered that the number of people that we have identified and are on treatment were about 800,000 plus. Today, as I'm talking to you, because of our ability to get out and to reach people um, in various communities and to take, take, take these uh, services to communities where we feel and we saw uh, after the survey that the shoes are pinching the most, um, people have accessed those services and we've identified additional or in addition another 800,000 over that, this last period, uh, last four years. Uh, that have HIV in our various communities and now are, are taking treatment, which is very remarkable. If you compare um, the campaign we have had all along, you know, until 2018, 2019, stigma and discrimination has come in between us and identifying um, these people. We were only able to identify 800,000. Now, within the last four years, we were able to identify 100% uh, of the number we have identified up until 2018, 2019. It shows we have made remarkable progress in fighting stigma and discrimination. You know, in our communities, we have made remarkable progress in taking these testing um, treatment services uh, to the doorstep of people across our communities um, uh, all over the country. And we have um, had remarkable progress in creating this awareness um, people now feeling comfortable to come forward and demand for HIV services and have their status known and then are accessing our treatment services. What we want to see in the next one to two years is more of these services, more of this access um, and by the year 2025 we're very hopeful uh, that we will arrive at the 95-95 target, um, UNES target before 2030. So from now to 2025, our target is to see Nigeria the arriving into the, uh, the same uh, boast of like very few countries in the world now that have attained 95, 95, 95, yet with population that is only one over 10 or one over 20th of Nigeria's population. With our population, about 200 million, we're very hopeful um, that among our peers that have this population, we should be among the first one to arrive at 95, 95, 95 by the year um, 2025. Okay, so and I guess we are equally uh, making plans ahead towards sustainability if we eventually get there, I guess. Yes, and um, this is one area that I think we are ahead of virtually every country. Um, I haven't seen any country in the world that have started this discussion about sustainability beyond 2030 like this Nigeria has done. Um, the last two years, we've worked with our um, development partners with uh, United Nations um, to see how do we engage and each other. Lady. And we have um, one national so, response, um, which is what we are having now. And if we have one national response, how do we promote integration? Uh, how do we promote ownership? Um, how do we put the states in the driver's seat so that this program is owned by states and the program is monitored and implemented by states? And the state now give us these numbers and give us information about the status um, of the various states and taking leadership and be responsive and responsible you know, towards 2030, because beyond 2030, states will be required, uh, you know, to lead and also own their individual responses. In Nigeria, we are starting this very early. Um, next year, 2024, we will see a program where states are gradually now being given the leadership. We will give them support. Um, this support include financial, include technical assistance for them to implement their program and to feel comfortable implementing the program as against what we have now, 
where we have the program implemented largely by development partners. Um, going forward from 2024, the program will now be gradually taken over by states and states will be um, required to implement. What we will want to see is the state implementing and we are seeing the same result as we are seeing with development partners. Um, with, our, with our population, with our ability and capacity, you know, to achieve epidemic control and to provide sustainable structures, uh, you know, for sustaining the control beyond 2030. As I'm talking, I'm telling you, global community and especially the American government, um, the Global Fund um, leaders in Washington and Geneva are happy with Nigeria because of the steps, the bold steps uh, we have taken and because of the direction we are moving. And we want to move in this direction and we want to ensure that this works for Nigeria and this works uh, beyond 2030. Okay, I think, uh, I hope other Nigerians are keeping their fingers crossed like I am uh, towards uh, that destination. So on that note, I would like to say thank you, uh, Dr. Gabo Ali, for joining us on the health option for this interesting conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Ali. Some targets on the program. A quick reminder that you can go to our YouTube channel to watch the upload of this and other episodes of the program. My name is Rabi Abdullah. Many thanks for watching. Be good and stay safe. I enjoy going to and see their.